said to it that I would encourage you to go out and uh, listen to it online. It's the profane. It's there's the sacra, which is the sacra, which is the religious, and then the second dance is more secular. Um, the basis of it for Debussy was that it was heaven and earth, and the colors of heaven and earth. Uh, the piece was originally written for a new harp, a chromatic harp, which was set up with all the strings by half steps, similar to a piano. That instrument is now basically in museums and never played. It didn't last very long, kind of like the arpeggioni, if anybody knows about the arpeggioni, which was a five-string cello. There's a sonata that Schubert wrote for it. Um, but the uh, chromatic harp was kind of unruly. It was very heavy and big, and it was very difficult to tune and keep in tune in time for any performances. So uh, it was originally, the idea was the pedal harp came in the early 19th century and was perfected, so to speak. And what happened was that Playel and Playel Company decided they really didn't want to deal with all these pedals. I, mean, I don't know if you could see how many times Irina had to do like this. So pedals would change all of the chromatics, so all the half steps, and so you can get the sharps and the flats and all of that. Um, so there's tons of pedal changes through it. And so Playel went to Debussy and said, you know, we're going to make a better harp instrument by having this idea of this chromatic harp. And so they commissioned Debussy to write a piece for that particular harp. Well, Debussy also didn't like that chromatic harp very much. It was, um, besides it being, you know, very hard to tune and very large, it also had a very weak sound. So he preferred the pedal harp, and then he did write, rewrite it so that it could be uh, performed in the future. I don't know if he had any anticipation it would be performed 100 years later or more than 100 years later and be one of the most profound and um, expected pieces of repertoire for the harpist. I want to tell you a little bit more about some of these other pieces, but I wanted to have a chance for our soloists to get to perform without giving you a whole lot of extra information. Um, Besides the Debussy, you heard this fantastic solo with Jonathan, which we've had a blast learning, the Sanson. And um, Sanson was also a French composer, and he was more of the Romantic period. This piece that, he, that Jonathan played was actually known as his first violin concerto. Um, Sanson had a lot of influence on Debussy and Fauré and the future of music. Um, he also was obsessed with opera as most musicians and composers were, and still are in Europe. If you, by the way, if you go to Europe, you should go to an opera. Uh, it's nothing, nothing like it in the world than to go see a European opera. And um, you basically weren't a successful composer unless you wrote an opera. And for Sanson, he had this other uh, contemporary composer who kept beating him out, and that was Massenet. And some of you may know the piece um, Meditation from Taif. I'm sure that all of you guys do. And that was Massonet's. Uh, I think actually Sanson probably won out because I think most people will know who Sanson is way before they know who Massonet is at this point. But they're really fascinating composers. Which leads us to our final piece and our final composer, which is Michael Haydn. So most of us in the music world are incredibly familiar with Joseph Haydn. Joseph Haydn was also known as, known as Papa Haydn. He was the uh, founder, creator, Papa of the string quartet. He's the one who really created and brought that all together. Well, his younger brother was quite an incredible musician as well, and dear friends with Mozart. Haydn, Joseph Haydn also was friends with Mozart. And Michael Haydn, was known more for his uh, vocal singing and his religious repertoire, into the point where even Haydn, Joseph Haydn, the senior Haydn, felt that Michael Haydn was a much better religious composer than Joseph was. Michael wrote 41 symphonies. He wrote, um, I think, I'm trying to remember now, 16 or something, 19, 20, 20 quartets of some sort. Um, and he also wrote a quintet that thought was written by his brother, but was written by Michael. Uh, he also wrote many pieces, many sonatas, 20 or more sonatas. Um, he wrote tons of religious music. 
And we're only really discovering him now. This piece in particular, just trying to find the music was a challenge and all the parts are really messed up. Some have rehearsal numbers, some have rehearsal letters. Um, there's parts that are written for a horn and trumpet that don't exist, so you have to use a score. Dr. Gietri went at the, Amy, who's our, our flutist, I think you created your own part off the score. Aubrey's playing a clarinet part that's supposed to be an oboe part that I had one of my colleagues um, transcribe and bring it in. And then we have the most incredible timpani player ever, Abby Artubis. Tubis. It's playing the timpani part. So we're doing a lot of fun things as we usually do with this group. I uh, want to encourage you to enjoy uh, all the aspects of this Michael Haydn piece. It is the only symphony he wrote with two movements. They're both a faster movement, though they say the second movement's the slower movement. Yeah, see, it doesn't make any sense to me either, but that's what you'll understand. And they're very dance-oriented. Um, Joseph and Michael's father was obsessed with uh, the music of folk music, and he taught himself how to play harp. He also taught himself other instruments, and he made sure that all of his children sang. And he sent Joseph and then later Michael to St. Stephen's in Vienna to be in the boys' choir. And they, that was their first job. Uh, I think that Joseph was around eight years old. And then he, or not Joseph, sorry, Michael was eight years old. And he had the most exquisite voice. Uh, Mozart also felt that he had the greatest voice and really honored him as a composer. Um, and then at 12 years old, he, became, he won the job as the organist in substituting in St. Stephen's. And then he wrote many uh, pieces, uh, preludes, and fantasies that he performed himself at 12 and 13 years old. So he's quite a prodigy. So I hope that you will go look up some Michael Haydn. There's a lot more on YouTube, even in the past six months, than there has been in the past 30, 40 years that I've been studying music. So please enjoy Michael Haydn's Symphony Number no. 32. Thank you. 
Thank you.